Welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. This is your host, Chris, and I have a very special guest on the line. I have Derek, the frontman of Sepultura. What's up, man? How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm pretty pumped, man. Uh, pleasure to have you on the show, especially right now at this time, because I just got to kick off my show. I have three hours of awesomeness going on tonight, and uh, you're a great lead-in. <laughs> so thank you so much. Oh, right on. Yeah, no problem, man. My pleasure. We were just jamming out to a couple of your tunes uh, right off your brand new record, Quadra, out February 7th through Nuclear Blast Records. Yeah, Isolation and Last Time. Those are some uh, really killer tracks, man. Uh, good job on those. <laughs> ah, thank you. Thank you. And it it's definitely has uh, you know, the elements of, of thrash that have uh, always been the root of Sepultura. Oh, definitely. You could as soon as it starts out, you're just like you get that right in the face, you know, the heaviness and everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so a little bit about this album. Uh, you guys took a a nice approach with it because this is your 15th studio record. Um, you guys have been around for so long. That's crazy. at 15 records, and with this one, you guys kind of took a different approach. You made it into like a concept record, and there's a whole backstory to it. If you can, can you uh, elaborate a little further? Yeah, um, well, Andreas was the one that came up with the, the concept of the album. Um, Quadra, uh, the name is Portuguese, and it's an actual, like, a playing field uh, that you play games. Um, and inside a Quadra, you normally have uh, certain rules. Um, and, and so Quadra is, like, pretty much a metaphor for for where people are born. You know, each person is born in their own Quadra part of the world. Um, and you are dictated by rules that are within your your quadra, you know, where you're born or where you're from. And you abide by them most of the times. Um, and if you don't, then, of course, there's repercussions. And so we really wanted to write about, you know, these different elements uh, from within, you know, living inside these quadras that we all are born into and questioning, you know, a lot of the things that go on um, that are put in front of us. And so uh, the album has, you know, many topics uh, dealing with that, you know, day-to-day life. So you said that Andreas came up with this idea. Like, where did he, um, where did he get inspired from it? Because, like you said, there's a lot of things in life. But was there like a specific mm-hmm. event or anything like that? Yeah, it was. It was definitely inspired from a, a book that he was reading, uh, Quadrivium, um, and that's basically, you know, uh, combining four elements of, of, of mathematics, um, I believe it's astronomy, um, geometry, and, oh, God, I can't remember the other. <laughs> um, but actually it was from that book that he was, he was completely inspired. And, and, and thinking of that of, and also a lot of numerology, um, the number four being very significant with this album, um, from the very beginning, we wanted to have four different elements, you know, four different parts of the album. Um, and in each of these four different parts, um, there would be elements of Sepultura, of the history of Sepultura. And so we were looking at it as if it were an album, you know, a, a double album. So side A, side B, side C, and D. And A being the first part of the album, being very... Um, thrash oriented um the second part being more groove oriented uh, parts coming from you know the roots phase and against um and then elements that are primarily on the third part being more instrumental and then the last being more geared towards uh melodical and um and uh, style of Sepultura. So there's all these different elements and four different parts of the album is broken into. So like, did you guys write everything brand spank and new for this record? Cause like you said, there's four sides to it. There's four, you know, sections to it. So did you guys like have to write everything from scratch in order to do this concept? Or did you guys have like lifts, uh, riffs and lyrics just laying around and it kind of just worked? No, I mean, we, we, we had everything, from scratch. I mean, it was really um, writing with nothing in mind, just the actual idea, you know, that Andres had for Quadrivium, uh, the book, 
Yeah, so I mean, I'm sorry. The four subjects I was I was talking about are arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. But um, so yeah, I mean, we what we decided is that since it took us, a, I mean, the last album that we did, Machine Messiah, we didn't have that much time to do it. So with this, we really wanted to have that preparation, and so we started writing very early um, in 2019, uh, of February. And um, and coming up with ideas uh, and, and taking our time with it, and this I think really added to the album uh, being able to have that preparation and time to create. Um, and so Andreas and Aloy were primarily writing the songs, um, and now me being in LA, they sent the songs uh, to me, and then I would come up with ideas uh, vocally. Um, and come up with the lyrics and everything. And um, I came to Brazil and, and started working the demo that we sent to our producer, uh, Jens Bogren, who we also worked with before on Machine Messiah. And we developed it in, in that way, uh, which worked out very well. Uh, even with me being in L.A. and them being in Brazil, a lot of the ideas just really meshed um, with with what Andres was thinking as far as where forces and courses should go and um it just really worked out very well so with you being in la and um, them being in brazil do you feel like that sometimes makes it easier because you have more time to work on something before you actually all meet up as a group or do you actually like being together and creating stuff that way i think a, a mixture of both is great i, I like having that, that space and being able to walk around with the music in my head and and getting a better idea for lyrically, uh, for lyrics and, and vocally what could be done. Um, but it's great, you know, working as a unit, as a group, you know, it's, it's something that's very significant uh, for this band. And I think the, the mixture of both is, is very healthy for us. Um, but it worked out. I mean, it's been working very well in, in, in this way. So you guys have at least 12 tracks on this record. Um, which one yeah. would you say is the one that's most important to you that really stands out? Oh, I, I definitely would say uh, Guardians of Earth. Um, it, it, it's something uh, that uh, it, it's really important as far as the actual Amazon talking about the the native people that are living there and uh basically talking it's basically a voice for them because uh they're being murdered um and and for people to really recognize what's going on with them and the struggle they're having um it's really important i think that this that i wanted to write about this uh in a song um and basically a lot of the the murder that's going on is unseen because there's no law there it's in the middle of the amazon and it's it's there's no money for police to to be there and it's such a, a vast area so there's a lot of agriculture companies and farmers that are are really destroying a lot of the the amazon uh for products uh for actual for meat um for europe and for america so a lot of it is all connected with what a lot of our lifestyles our lifestyle and things that we're doing here actually have an effect on what's happening there. Um, and so I just really felt, you know, it was really important to, to have a voice, to make a voice for those people. And so for me, that's definitely one of the most important songs on the album. So like to better, like, um, you know, better spread the message. Do you think like a music video or like lyric video for that song would be like, you know, suffice. Yeah, I've been working on an idea, um, and and hopefully we'll have something um, to show uh, for that song uh, because I, I think it's it's really powerful song, and visually I, I've been working on an idea that I'm going to be working with the director and, and translating it for them to to really come up with something cool. Oh, definitely. I feel like videos that like if it's important to the artist and then like they take a lot of time into making like an actual great music video, I feel like it's just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
it's a success, you know, just doing that. I feel like the uh, the the videos of ba- uh, just bands playing in like a warehouse sometimes gets old, and lyric videos too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I know, yeah, I know that's, that's like true. I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I a lot of times, I mean, uh, with videos, you know, we get a director and they're very controlling. And uh, and in the past, I I was definitely more involved, and and I and I've been feeling that lately that I, I want to be more involved in the video concepts and and everything because there's certain things that just kind of played out how involved are you guys in like all aspects of like you know making the album like marketing the album and like everything about like the whole process of quadra like how involved are you guys Uh, i'm pretty involved i mean especially i mean with andreas and the way primarily the 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 songwriters for the music um I did all the the, the lyrics and, and the verses and choruses and figuring out like what would be done there. Um, I think, you know, for us, like we always like to work with a producer who's able to contribute to uh, what we've been doing um, with ideas and 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 come up with like very. Uh, I, I guess like creative ideas. And so with the end Boger, uh, it, it's always fantastic work with him because he has such a great work ethic and um, he has a great ear. Um, and this really helps us a lot when we have everything pretty much ready to go. And then he's always coming up with great ideas to add to that. Um, so this is really something that's been working very well since the last album as well. We worked with the ends and, um, we felt that we, you know, we wanted to do more with him. So with Quadra, I, I felt that we were able to expand musically even further. Um, even, you know, with the end coming up with the idea of a lot of the chorus of the choir, and it's actually a real choir, you know, he's like, I, I don't want to have like, um, like keyboard choir or anything like that. I want to, he's like imagining like a, a full on choir of people. Um, and so then we had to come up with ideas for the choir um, and actually look up certain terms in Latin that were related to the lyrics and then um, and then having to record in an actual church in Sweden with the choir. Um, but, it, it, you know, these ideas are huge and, and massive and, and it really adds to the music. So uh, to work in that environment, you know, all the ideas – you know, we're open to so many different ideas, and it's great to be able to work with a team of people like that. Ah, that's awesome. I didn't know you guys were actually, uh, you know, recorded that at a church. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really cool. And, I mean, I think in the future it would be great to have, you know, a live show, a special show, you know, with the choir and everything so people could really feel that, you know. Yeah, of course. What, what? So what tracks, like, have the choir on it? Like, is there more than one track? Yeah, um, I, I'm trying to remember off, offhand. I, I'm pretty sure Isolation, definitely um, Agony of Defeat, um, Guardians of Earth. Um, there might be a few other like subtle uh, choir parts, but yeah, definitely there. <laughs> and uh, 15 albums in, you guys are still finding ways to be relevant and like new ways to like you know be creative. That's awesome. And also with like the uh, just like the actual physical CD, you guys have a great pack going on right now for Quadra. You guys have um, like a CD jewel case. It's two CDs. You also have the Blu-ray, an earbook. Um, you have a picture disc, a colored vinyl. Uh, you guys went all out. Also, and, and yeah, definitely. And and one of the great things that we have also in that package is the endurance movie documentary sepultura that we did and um and finally you'll be able to see it um because it's been out on netflix in latin america uh but finally you know fans in europe and america will be able to to check it out uh, yeah, that's awesome too. I didn't even realize that you guys had a the documentary in there as well. That's, that's right. A, that's a huge yeah. bonus. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and that comes out February seventh. Everyone listening, February seventh. Yes, and then we'll be kicking off a tour in North America, um, in the middle of March, um, with Sacred Reich and Crowbar and Art of Shock. 
Yeah, that's. Did you guys pick those bands? Like, I'm, I'm assuming that you're friendly with all of them. Did you guys get to like work with them, or are they just bands that were available? Well, I mean, we're actually friends with uh, Crowbar and, and and Sacred Life for a really long time, and uh, fortunately, the, they were available. You know, we we usually go through a list of different bands that we'd like to tour with, and uh, and and those guys were were all available. So, and they also. Uh, Crowbar will be coming out with a new album, and and Sacred Reich, they have a new. The latest album is fantastic, so it was really good timing. Yeah, definitely, and I feel like uh, Sacred Reich with you guys is a perfect combination, and then you have Crowbar, which is that like slow heaviness. It's yeah, beautiful. <laughs> I, I love those guys. Yeah, I and mean, I think it's a, a great package, and I'm so excited to start it off in the U.S. Actually, so I'm really looking forward to it. For anyone tuning in right now, you're listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, the Metal Teddy Bear Experience, and I'm here with Derek Green, the vocalist of Sepultura. So on my show, I asked three random silly questions. Are you ready to take part in that? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry. It won't be that bad. They're not that crazy. They're just random. <laughs> um, what is the funniest thing or weirdest thing a fan has done to you? Um, chased me to the tour bus and ripped my shirt off. What? Really? They went that far? Yeah. Where was, uh, where was that? Dude. In Spain. Wow. Okay. Uh, was that it just was like weird. a crazed fan? or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. She was really drunk and, and really crazy and uh, really, very strong. And I was expecting somebody to help me, you know, but I was just like fighting my way on the bus. And she was like ripping my shirt off. You mean like other fans or like yeah, security or something or bandmates? Yeah, yeah. Or somebody in my band or anybody. <laughs> yeah. the crew, you know, but no help from anyone. They're just laughing at you? <laughs> yes. Giggling like they thought it was a joke. And I was like dead serious. <laughs> wow. That's nuts. <laughs> I hope yeah. it wasn't like one of your favorite shirts or anything like that. <laughs> no, thank God. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Question number two: If you could have only one food for the rest of your life, what food would you choose? Oh my God, it's a horrible thought. Um, yeah. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, possibly. Um, Maybe a burrito. A burrito? Okay. I haven't gotten that one yet. Usually, like, okay. I get like um, steaks. I get burgers, chicken. Uh, for me personally, it'd be pizza. I just I can eat pizza every day. <laughs> it's so good. It's fattening, but it's so good. You know? Yeah, I love pizza as well. So good. And then you can have it with so many different toppings. You know, different thing every day. <laughs> This is true. I mean, burrito is like, oh, I can fill it with different things all the time. True that. Yeah, there's all different types of burritos out there. Yeah. Um, question number three. What's a TV show character you love, but you would hate to hang out with in real life? George Costanza from Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, that, that was good. You Pretty quick on that one, too. Have you thought about that before? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I know TV characters so well, and, and I probably have thought about it before. <laughs> it was either that or, or Larry David. Oh God! Yeah. Do you have you been watching New Arrested? The uh, no, sorry, uh, the Kirby Enthusiasm. No. Uh, it's it's pretty ridiculous. He, he's same old Larry David being very difficult. <laughs> so good. Awesome. So every friend group has that one person who's like a George Costanza. Do you do you have oh, that yeah. in your life? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is, but you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, I love that. We, I was hanging out with another group of friends, and they had a Costanza, and I'm like, oh, they should meet my Costanza. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> but that was the random silly question segment. What? I hope it wasn't too crazy for you. <laughs> no, it was fine, man. It's cool. There we go. So, like you mentioned, uh, you guys are hitting the road in March with Sacred Reich, Crowbar, and Art of yeah. Shock. Um, what do you guys yeah. have planned after that? Anything you want to talk about? Well, we have a bunch of uh, festivals that we're doing in Europe. So since we didn't do that many festivals, or actually we didn't do any um, last year um, purposely uh, so we could work on the album, um, 
we're we're gonna hit as many as we can this year and next year. So a lot of European festivals. There we go. Oh, did you guys get to do the uh, seventy tons of metal? Seventy thousand tons of metal. We did not do that. Uh, timing wise, and uh, again, we the first thing that we want to do is the U.S. tour to kick that off. Okay. Well, no, I just asked yeah. because I feel like every metal band I've seen lately, they, they've been, they were mm-hmm. on it. I was like, did the whole yeah, metal we, community we, go we there? We actually did that in the past, so it was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of great bands. Uh, definitely a much funner than I imagined. So. It sounds Maybe exhausting, but fun at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely exhausting. Um, but you get to see a lot of bands that you might normally not be able to see. And uh, in an environment where it actually sounds very good. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would like to do it in the future. Nice. I hope we get to see you soon on it. And um, thanks again for taking the time out. Everyone, yeah, Quadra, man. February 7th. Nuclear Blast Records. Number seven. Get the album, Quadra. There you go. Thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure. All right. Thanks for having me. Take care, man.